Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. And I'm Rex, and this is a so, bottle, almost empty bottle. Well, well, so Mitch Weddle gave us this. Yes. And uh, we lost track because he gave us like 50 bottles, and I lost track of which were his because we reorganized the whole vault. Yeah. And this was like years ago. Yeah. And um, and when he sent me the list of like, hey guys, here's what I actually dropped off for you. Right. I went. Oh, that Glendronic <laughs> peated. Right. Or that Glendronic cask was Show the yours. How much is uh, left, Daniel? I drank a lot of that one. How much is left? Sorry, man. You you basically just gave Daniel a full whiskey yeah. to just you know piss about and drink it willy nilly. This, not even do a review. Not even give you credit. This is batch three of Glendronic, their special edition releases and of the cask strength. Only reason I'm butt hurt is because you didn't pour me a glass until just now. Um, Mitch Weddle, you full Weddle Titan you, of whiskey. Then there's a thing we do going. Well, are we doing yeah. that with the Titan? Yeah, is a Titan. So okay. he's a full Weddle Titan. I'm supposed to hit you with something? Oh yeah. Is there? There may be an animation now, right now. If not, <laughs> if not, then hold on, hold on. Okay. That was a flick. Oh. <laughs> that was a good one. God, yeah. I just can't do it anymore. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Hardest part of your body right there. Yeah. Okay. I didn't feel a thing. Can I get a... Can, can I break a, your fingers? Yeah, like a wet wipe. <laughs> uh, touching a bald man's head is a weird thing. <laughs> Even for that split it's second. It's just pure like, skin. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Okay. So, uh... This is an addition that Glenn Dronick did as a release where they uh, specifically chose... Uh, an Oloroso and a Pedro Menes cask and blended them and they chose them each batch They specifically choose the two barrels to blend together for the next batch. Okay, so this is batch three And it's a mix of Oloroso and Pedro Menes. Oh, okay, the nutty dark fruits man And this is one of my all-time favorite Glintronics. I'm switching. I'm switching the 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 sequence dark fruit and nuttiness. Yeah, and that dark includes fruit. the 21 Parliament This is superior to the 21 Parliament. Okay. All right. Oh man, it's so good, and it's so got the, the mulchy mustiness too. Okay, so the dark fruits are going to be the dominant notes. You're going to be like the the, the figs, the prunes, the dark. But behind plumbing. that, there's this dark wet leather, and garden mulch. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, this is this is beautiful. Yeah, we can see that. We can see how beautiful. I may or may not have really liked this one. You can see cask strength, Mitch by the way. Cask strength at 54.9%. Uh, oh! Come on! Son of a. Get any single one of the Glendronic batches of the cask strengths. Yeah. They're all good. So. But I just love every, Glendronic. Every once in a while you have a whiskey and you know you have to say words. But describe. you really just want to drink it? This is the only thing I want to do. I'm going to be like, it's just too good. It's too good. I just need a moment. It's just that good. It's too good. It's too good. This may be, I think, my all-time favorite sherry cask whiskey. I could see that. If I'm going because, for a sherry cask dominant whiskey. Right. And I think I'm, I, know, I think I know why. Because you get this really beautifully mature presentation of dark fruitiness, mm -hmm. but it doesn't go so into the fruit sweet spectrum. Yeah, it's not pure sugar. Right, it doesn't get overbearingly sweet with that. You just get like the, the character of those dark fruity notes without getting the sugar from those notes. It's lovely. In music, this would be a cello. Yeah. Low, rich, dulcet, resonant tones. Yeah, yeah, cello with like, uh, with a deep red finish on that wood. Yeah. Yeah, like almost a blood red wood on there. Oh. Okay. Almost. Well, we got the oh. Anthony, the Anthony Kluska, while Daniel composes himself. I know it's so good. As a chapter leader and founding member of the Lagavulin Illuminati, <laughs> so many factions in the tribe. There are. They've all named themselves. Uh, I am also the acting diplomat to the cult of Ardbeg. That's oh. right, he bought a bottle of Ardbeg post that oh. said, I'm now an Ardbeg diplomat. So, there, there's diplomacy going on. This is the first step. trying to reach across the aisle. First step to, to see if there's a compromise between, you know, the status quo and outright warfare. Diplomacy is key to this yeah. process. Although what I posted was, uh, one of the things I wanted to post was this animated gif of, of uh, Anakin Skywalker is like, this is what your diplomacy 
brings, you know, yeah. 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 the emperor is in charge now. <laughs> Jason Lampson. So I was going through the last three vault videos this morning, and I got to thinking, Daniel not a rye fan, mm -hmm. but he is a whiskey sommelier. Mm -hmm. This means that if he is recommending whiskeys for a person who is a rye fan... I gotta meet him where they're at. He's gonna have to recommend a rye. Yes. Uh -huh. So, is there a whiskey you are not a fan of, um, you, can just, you don't hate it, but it's just not your thing, that you would recommend to a person who may enjoy that so, uh, sort of thing? He gave a great example of this, and I think it was Slane Castle, an Irish whiskey. Okay. But what I would love to see in the YouTube comments is, the whiskey that you're not that much of a fan of, but what you would recommend genuinely to someone in that category if they were asking honestly. So I think... I love the idea of that. So I can tell you one right now, and we recently did it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Bren French Whiskey. Yeah, not a fan of the sweetness, but if you love that candy sugar, yeah. I would get you... Brand I'll bet Brandy would like that one. Maybe. Is she a sugar fan? It may be a little bit too heavy handed. She's very going to want a lower proof. I don't sure. really know if she's salt or, or although, sugar fan. Although she does really like my Red Breast 15. Oh. Yeah. The Lestau one? Has she tried that one? Uh, I don't think Which she, has the wine finish? I don't know. Absolutely. Mm. She confiscated this for her own. See, Halei is not yeah. a sweets fan. She likes salt, mm. savory things. Okay. All right. Now, oh, the other thing. So, just in terms of like me personally not mm. enjoying it. But if somebody wants a really crazy funky adventure, was it the was it the Wiggle Rye? Is it the Wiggle Rye? Yeah, okay. that was dramatic. The Wiggle Rye. I this is not for me, but there are people who just want something so interesting and unique and weird that they could very well adore this thing. So as much as I don't like it, I think there's people that could absolutely love it. And from what I understand, it's a pretty popular rye mm -hmm. amongst some circles who are into just the funky adventures. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So um, the what next is, whiskey we're going to be doing... Wait, just... Uh, just uh, uh, I'm just following directions. Just, but you're not... Look, look at the side of the bottle. Malt whiskey for... Okay, that's... Graffiti. That's just not nice. It's graffito tagged. The the whiskey it says You're, malt whiskey for not Rex. This is from Tommy Moat. Go ahead. Now Tommy Moat. Go ahead. Is a because I ain't doing it. Tommy Moat is uh, is one of the upper level dudes. At Balconis whiskey. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, and uh, they did a special release of this. I couldn't make it to Waco for it. And so he sent us back a bottle as a gift because right. he knew that I really wanted one because sure. Tommy's an amazing human being. Right. Now, he is a rep for the distillery, and this oh, is his oh, bottle. Okay. So we sort of need to do a... So I'm not going to magnificent bastard him because this is uncalled for. <laughs> Out of line! Unacceptable. But I will give you weird cricket chirps. We could have had a beautiful future together. <laughs> we could, I could have been a contender. <laughs> so, now this is their single malt finished in rum casks. I was so about to say. Early there's, on, there's they a, did some Texas rum. Yeah. And then when those got dumped, they filled it with single malt. And then they did this special edition release. This is January 26, 2019. So we have recently done another whiskey. I think it was about a week ago, maybe a couple days ago. I don't know. That was also a rum finished whiskey. And it's really interesting how the rum does show up in a notice. Andalusia. Oh, it was Andalusia. Andalusia Striker. Okay. Okay. Now, theirs was peated. I don't think this is the peated. Wait, wait, wait. That was peated. That, and, well, not and peated. Rum? It was smoked, not okay, peated. Okay. And this was not peated, but single malt and rum. Okay. 27 months old. Both rum finished. Yeah. Okay. 27 months old, a little over two years old. And on the nose, that's where you mostly find it, um, for me at least. I mean, you get it on the taste, but the nose is going to have that, that almond. That kind of uh, buttery, creamy. Now keep in mind, this is cask strength release. No, I, I take back. I'm not going to say buttery. I'm going to say like a creamy, sweet almond. This is 63.5% alcohol. Damn, y'all. All right. <laughs> this is why Balconas has to release entry-level bourbons that they proof down to make it their, themselves more accessible <laughs> to people who aren't like, Yeah! <laughs> this nose, I get the same thing I got from Andalusia in the sense that like I definitely smell the rum. Right, it brings up all of the glassy metallic sugars. So I'm not going to say whether or not I'm enjoying this nose. You're not gonna? No. Can you tell me privately? 
He hates it. Yes, I do, because of that guy with the things. <laughs> what the hell, dude? What the hell? I got a piece of dried cork in my mouth. And right. my texture guy, and that totally ruined it for me. Hang on a second, I gotta start over. Because that just really threw me for a loop. <laughs> you know what You know what I got in my glass? Hmm. Bullshit. Because of that guy. Because Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even saying his name. You're just unreal. I'm not saying his name. You know what I'm talking about. Man, I'll tell you, the the aftertaste is still growing, still expanding. It's uh, because I switched my mouth around to try to get to the cork bits. My whole mouth is evaporating this rum single malt, and I'm getting all of these I like, say. spicy sugar notes. Like baking spice, black tea, molasses, and then this. It's very bready too, though. Wrapper of a rummy finish. Now my aftertaste is only wood notes. Yeah, the finish is gonna be wood. A rummy wrapper around the body. Okay, yeah. I gotta start over. Starting over. Mm-hmm. You know it's the karma because that guy. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like if a fruit cake. Like a, a really dark, dense fruitcake had molasses on it, but then was mostly wood tasting. And then the ending has that bright metallic sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of water and just see what happens to it's, opening this it's thing like a, up. Like a cedar plank fruitcake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you bake it on the cedar plank. Yeah. Oh, come on. Now it's the rum is jumping out of the glass. Mm, no. You add a little water and the rum comes to the top. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna say. I was, I was halfway joking. But think, but actually think, cedar. A bit. So here's what's weird. If you add a little water, the sweet rum notes explode out of the glass, but the sugar taste drops by half. It stops tasting sweet. And it starts tasting tannic and barely so with a little bit of the metallic sugar floating in the back end. Yeah, I get this swirly bit still. Yeah, it's so, I mean, this is so oily. You know what's preventing me from actually really enjoying this? Tommy oh Moe. <laughs> <laughs> you may have gotten the most ball busting in one single episode. Uh, and that includes the Weddle and the Zerboli. <laughs> you got nothing on that guy. That guy. Not I love that say. you refuse to even say his name. Not even say <laughs> I'm not even gonna give him the satisfaction. The yeah. nose got sweeter, the taste got less sweet. I didn't go to the nose after I did the water, but the taste does get less sweet. Yeah. But, yeah. It's a great whiskey though. Yeah, especially if you're a fan of Balconis, you enjoy yourself a rum every now and then. This is a hit. The uh, rum shows up. This is right over home plate, this throw. I think we're good? I'm not good, because of that guy. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's and heart. if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Screw that guy. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.